Good afternoon, everybody. This is Jeannie from e Technologies. I just wanted to thank you for tuning into our webcast today. The topic is Becoming a Data-Driven Organization. So today our presenter, who I'll introduce in a moment, will be talking to you guys about becoming a data-driven organization. So but first off, what does that mean? A data-driven organization is an organization that does not rely on its gut for decisions. You make an informed decision based on real-time insights. So in short, it's a company that manages their business proactively, not reactively, which sounds great, right? So how do you do that for your organization? Well, that's exactly what our presenter will be talking about today. So with no further ado, I have with me today Craig Vivier of Vineyard Soft Software, the provider of Knowledge Sync, which is a leading solution for business activity monitoring. Craig has over 25 years of experience in the software industry with an emphasis on enterprise solutions and operational management implementation. So you guys are in very good hands for the next few minutes here. So with all of that being said, I'm going to pass it over to you, Craig, whenever you're ready. Welcome, folks, and thank you very much for taking time out of your schedule this afternoon to spend with us. And again, thanks to the folks at E2B Technologies for hosting uh, this afternoon's webinar. We are going to be talking quite a bit about uh, the definition of a data-driven data organization, as well as what are ways in which we, bec we can become more data-driven. So I usually start with the somewhat uh, rhetorical question of, have you ever, during the course of your day-to-day -day business activities, said to yourself, if only I had known, if only I had known that this customer owed us money, I would never have processed this new order for them. If only I had known that this particular inventory item was out of stock, I would have reordered this so that we could fulfill all these orders today. So the topic or the theme of if only I had known is central to becoming a data-driven organization. And when we talk about the, the definition of a data-driven organization, it truly is just that. It's using the data that we have from day-to-day -day transactions, whether it's in an ERP system, a CRM application, an HR database, or any of the other various systems that we use to retain our, our company and organizational information. All of that can be turned into meaningful information and subsequently pushed out to your constituents, your employees, your customers, your vendors, suppliers, et cetera, so that they can help and assist in making timely, intelligent decisions about your organization. And the way that we currently see a lot of organizations doing, um, uh, becoming data-driven is, it's usually by gut feel. Okay, a lot of times, mostly small, medium-sized enterprises tend to run on gut feel instinct, if you will, to make decisions about their business. That is, this is the way that it's done in the past, this is the way that it's worked, this is the way that we're going to do it going forward. There's not, not, nothing terribly wrong with that, but certainly we can find ways to fine-tune this decision-making so that we're having a serious impact on our company's bottom line and top line growth. All right, so what we often find is the major challenge is, well, I have all this data. I'm running an ERP application, I'm running a CRM application, maybe I've got some other third-party vertical solutions or homegrown applications that I use, and it contains a lot of data. So again, the challenge is how do we take that data, turn it into meaningful information that can be, again, used by you and your constitu constituents, and again, pushed out to them, delivered to them, if you will. So the key challenge is giving your data a voice. What is it that you want your data to tell me? And some of the examples that we see across multiple organizations and using different applications is hey, I want to know when my inventory, a particular inventory item is running low on stock and needs to be reordered. Or subsequently, I want to know if I've got inventory that's been sitting in my warehouse is too long collecting dust and eating up valuable cash. Also looking at things like a customer, customer's credit limit. We processed an order for a customer who has exceeded their credit limit. I'd like to know these things as they're occurring, okay? So the idea is how do we take that data, identify what's important to you, your organization, and give that data a voice so it speaks to you, it speaks to your constituents, again, your employees, your customers, vendors, prospects, etc. Now, another key theme around becoming data-driven is exception management. When you look at the topic of exception management, you often look at having to run reports. So my guess is most of you have uh, applications that are, are use various types of reports that you need to use, and that analytical reports, etc. 
And typically what we find is if you walk into any manager's office, they've got a stack of reports sitting on their desk that they need to read through to find these anomalies, these exceptions, if you will. So it's a fairly intensive process because you're running all these reports. Now you've got to have someone go through these reports to, again, identify those anomalies, those exceptions to your business, that things that warrant your attention. And of course, then you need to take action based on that. Now that's all well and good, and there's a place for that. However, that's, that's very much a rear view mirror approach to business activity management, if you will. Okay, Because now you're looking in the mirror saying, well, my goodness, we found out about this, but by the time we found out, it was too late. Okay, We had passed that, that exit, if you will. So let's consider the option of automating these processes. Let's look for certain types of conditions within our underlying database applications, be it ERP, CRM, HR, et cetera. Let's identify those that are important to us. Let's automatically alert and notify those people that need to be aware of those issues so, again, they can act on them quickly and timely. All right? And then also, how do we automate some of the routine tasks that we often have to do manually or at best semi-manually today? Now, the underlying technology that supports becoming a data-driven organization is something that we refer to as knowledge sync. Okay, you'll hear it called a number of different names, and I'll go over those a little bit later. But really, knowledge sync is a business activity monitoring technology. And the definition of a business activity monitoring tool is, in fact, to monitor on a regular basis those conditions of data that are critical and time sensitive to your organization and automatically respond through a variety of different actions, sending out email notifications and alerts, delivering web dashboards, automatically generating reports, you know, writing back into your application, et cetera. And it's really a marriage of four distinct, but yet very much uh, related technologies. There's the data mining aspect of it, the ability to monitor and look for those conditions within your underlying application that are important to you. There's the notification engine, that is, how do I want to deliver this information out to, again, sort of notify, aware, you know, make them aware of these particular business issues or problems. There's the report generation component. How do I take and deliver, automatically deliver any reports that I have? And then finally is this concept of workflow, which is in our um, definition of that is a little bit different than you might be used to hearing, but it's typically the idea of automatically performing actions like writing data back into your database application, moving data, for instance, from, say, your ERP to your CRM application, et cetera. So let's take a look at an example. And this actually is an example from an ERP customer where they were had a, a number of very good paying customers that were paying on time in full, but they were starting to notice a trend. If at the end of every month they were running their AR reports and they started to notice that several customers had built up a fairly significant um, receivables. And this was a bit of an issue for them because this was several years ago when economically things were looking tough for a lot of us. So what ended up happening was they had a fairly uh, a they were continuing to sell into these these customers owed them ten thousand, fifteen, twenty-five thousand dollars. They didn't find out about it too late, and unfortunately, in two instances, they had to write off a significant amount of debt. As in these cases, two of their customers ended up shuttering their doors. Right? Again, how do we actually take just this one scenario and automate this process to preemptively? attack this issue or potential issue before it even occurs. So what we did with the Knowledge Sync solution is we set it up so that it would automatically notify the account manager responsible for the customer as their receivables were coming up for payment. So before it hit net 30 or net 60, it was notifying the account manager to say, hey, your customer owes money. Please get on the phone with them or bring it up during your next meeting with them, et cetera. Secondly, we set up a routine that automatically notified finance so that if it went beyond net 30, net 40, et cetera, or net 60, it would automatically start the collections process. We went on to a customer who recently told us that they never have to pick up the phone to do collections calls anymore. They're using Knowledge Sync to do it for them. Thirdly is, we went so far as to automatically send out any open invoices uh, and AR aging reports to that customer, as again, as a gentle reminder, we now you owe us this money. We'd like to settle this out. Here's who you'd contact, et cetera, et cetera. And then finally, we put a workflow routine in that basically when a customer hit a certain dollar value or when they exceeded or hit their credit limit, we wanted to put them automatically using Knowledge Sync on credit hold or credit watch. 
And again, all of this was done with the Knowledge Sync Alerts and Workflow solution. Now, for some of you folks, you might have heard this under a different name. The generic technology is referred to as Knowledge Sync. If you're a Sage customer, you might be familiar with this as Sage Knowledge Sync or even Sage Alerts and Workflow. If you're using other applications, we actually embed this with other applications as well. So you might hear about this Knowledge Sync application under a different name. But for today, we'll go ahead and use the generic Knowledge Sync name. So at its core, at its base, if you will, it is a monitoring and response engine. You tell Knowledge Sync what application or applications you want it to monitor, okay? And it will support and monitor any database application that's using what's called an ODBC compliant database. So whether your backend database is Microsoft SQL Server, Oracle, Sybase, Microsoft Access, ProvideX, Pervasive, Paradox, you name it, Knowledge Sync is going to be able to monitor and respond to any conditions within those backend databases. So often what we find in the financial accounting and ERP space is having Knowledge Sync monitor for not just upcoming payments, overdue receivables, looking at a customer's uh, status, so what is their credit limit, what is their credit status, looking at inventory items that may be approaching their reorder level, all of those can. This is just a partial list of some of many, literally thousands of different conditions that we've configured over the years that are specific to the accounting, financial, and uh, ERP space. And again, looking at such things as aging stock, um, inventory, if you've got any inventory that has a sell-by, use-by date, looking at that kind of stuff on a day-to-day -day or hour-to-hour -hour basis to make sure that you're staying on top of that. Or deliveries, for instance. You know, if, if I've got an order going out to a customer, is it going to be late? And wouldn't it be nice to proactively uh, notify that customer via knowledge saying that, hey, we got your order. Uh, it's going to be a day late. We apologize. Any questions, please call us. But at least you're communicating with them on that, and they're not finding out about it too late. And again, because this is an open technology, it has the ability to monitor not only your core business management application, but if you've got other applications, whether they're HR, manufacturing, uh, some other people use other different types of inventory systems, um, some are vertical applications, depending on your industry, Knowledge Sync does have the ability to monitor those. And as in with the ERP, if you are using a CRM or some type of automated Salesforce automation tool, you can monitor such things as leads coming in, lead aging, opportunities where the probability has been changed. So very, very powerful tool across any business application. One of the other cool features of Knowledge Sync is its ability to not only monitor and respond to conditions within your underlying database applications, but to monitor and respond to the incoming email. So if you've got those generic email addresses like the sales at or the info at, and you're relying on that through your website, you can use Knowledge Sync to monitor, automatically monitor incoming email being sent to specific email addresses and or web form submissions. And as a result, Knowledge Sync will automatically send out notifications routed to the appropriate person in your organization. It can auto respond to the sender with the information that they've requested. You can pull that data into your CRM or into your ERP application. A lot of different ways you can use this, what we refer to as the email response system. And again, we do have a number of customers that are using what we would refer to as a, an enterprise-wide or a cross-application implementation of the Knowledge Sync tool, where they're comparing data between two different applications. And the example that you'll see here is, I want to look at my CRM application to see if I've got any new sales op new open opportunities. And then I want to look for that customer's opportunity, and I want to compare that with the same customer's financial history in my ERP application. Because I want to know, is this going to put them over my credit limit? So this is one of many examples of how Knowledge Sync can be used to, again, kind of go across the enterprise, across multiple applications to monitor and compare data between them. So in terms of delivery methods, um, there are numerous. Okay, You'll see down below in the bottom part of the screen, we support delivery through email. And that includes all email systems, including Microsoft Exchange, Outlook, hosted or on-premise. Uh, SMTP mail, including some of the free SMTP services like Gmail, Hotmail, Yahoo Mail, etc. Um, so we support all email platforms, including some of the earlier legacy systems like Lotus Notes and even G uh, GroupWise. Text messaging is becoming big because we've got a very you know sort of mobile workforce out there. We've got people traveling. We want to deliver the information to them there. 
web dashboard. You can deliver Twitter, Instant Messenger. Okay, and you'll see these are just a couple of examples of what we refer to as a web dashboard. So it's displaying the information to your recipients in a dynamic web page, and it will self-refresh every time that event has been identified by the Knowledge Sync solution. One of the key areas of the Knowledge Sync and one of the key components functionally is its reporting component. If you are at all reliant on crystal reports, you need to take a look at Knowledge Sync. And I know that sounds rather salesy, but this is a very, very powerful tool or component of the Knowledge Sync technology. Knowledge Sync includes a crystal reports runtime engine. So if you have any crystal reports that you're running, you can use Knowledge Sync to auto-generate and distribute those reports on either a triggered basis and or a scheduled basis. Meaning, if Knowledge Sync identifies a certain condition or set of conditions within your underlying application, you might want to automatically have not only send out an alert notification, but you might want to attach a crystal report to that, whether it's an invoice or an AR aging report or any of those kinds of things. Secondly, with the scheduled reports, if you've got those more routine reports that you run every day, every Friday, every end of month, end of quarter, simply set up a schedule within Knowledge Sync, point Knowledge Sync to wherever that crystal report is, tell it who you want it to go to and at what times, and it will automatically deliver that. So I will say, again, with a bit of a, a sales overtone, if you will, that um, a lot of our customers see immediate value. If you were all reliant on crystal reports, they see immediate value when they start using Knowledge Sync to auto-generate and to deliver their crystal reports. And then finally, the component that we talked about was this workflow piece. And that is the idea of taking further action. So once an event or a condition or set of conditions has been identified by Knowledge Sync within your underlying application, you've sent out a not alert notifications, you've generated reports, dashboards, et cetera. Now what do you want to do? I may want to put a customer on credit hold. For instance, the example I used earlier, right? That was the uh, that was an idea of, or that was a uh, a routine, a workflow routine where, when Knowledge Sync identified a customer as having reached or exceeded their credit limit, not only did they send out a notification to the customer, but it automatically wrote back into the ERP system to put that customer on credit hold. So that would be an idea or an example of a workflow routine. Now the licensing and pricing very, very gently priced, if you will. Um, it is not licensed based on the number of seats or users, because this is a system level application. It is licensed on the, base, uh, on the number of applications that you wish to monitor. So if all you want to do is monitor and respond to conditions within your ERP application, that's a one connection license. And as you'll see, that starts off at $17.99. If you then wanted to monitor and respond to conditions within, a, say, a CRM application or a second application, you would just continue to add application licenses to those. The most you would ever need to invest in is four, at which point we automatically convert you to an unlimited database license connection. And again, we've, we've broken this out as modular pricing so that a la carte, you can pick and choose those components that you want. A lot of customers will start with the alerts. If they've got crystal reports, they'll add the reports module. They may not have any interest in doing any sort of work, workflow or action, so they just eliminate that piece. So, we try to make this as uh, this licensing schema as simple as possible for our customers. So what I'm going to do, since we've only got a few minutes left, is I do want to walk into the application or walk you through the application. So I'm going to bring it up right now. Again, Knowledge Sync is not a user-based application. It's not something that you're going to roll out to three or five or ten people in your organization. Typically, you're going to have one or two people that do the initial setup and configuration of the Knowledge Sync application. And the idea behind this is it's a lights out application. It runs in the background as a what's called a Windows service. So it's going to do what you want it to do. And the first way that you do that is you set up your different what we call events. And events is just a fancy way of saying business conditions or business issues. So when I open up my Knowledge Sync event manager, you'll notice that this is where I'm going to probably end up doing most of my upfront work. But the idea behind it is you tell Knowledge Sync which applications or ap application or applications you want it to monitor, what conditions or set of conditions you wish to monitor within those applications, and subsequently how you want Knowledge Sync to respond once those conditions have been met or not met, as the case may be. So as a result, it's a lights out. It's, it's often been referred to as my invisible assistant or my extra employee uh, or my smoke detector for my business. It's been given many different names over the years. 
But you'll notice that when I set up and open up my events branch, I have about 10 different applications that I'm having monitored by KnowledgeSync as we speak. I've got an ERP application, okay? I've got an HR application, I've got a CRM, I've got two branches that are linking those two together, okay? So each and every one of these is a separate monitoring link, if you will. But if I go in right now, and I'll just go into my ERP branch, when I open up my ERP branch, it's going to give me a list of all of the events that I currently have configured. Now, there is no limit to the number or types of conditions or events, as we call them, that you can monitor within your application using KnowledgeSync. I have heard people go well over 700. I have heard people using just few, as few as one or two events. But you'll notice that when you look at this screen, I have a whole bunch of different events already configured to be, that are being monitored within this ERP application. I have a number that are related to account information balances. I have a number that you'll see are labeled AP, so those are all my accounts payable type conditions that I'm monitoring. And of course, I've got a number that are related to accounts receivable. I want to look for overview invoices. I want to look for balances that are in excess of X amount. Again, very, very flexible in terms of what you can monitor based on different parameters, based on date thresholds, things like that. And you'll notice as I scroll down, I have a number that are related to inventory, items that are available, items that are available in different warehouses, et cetera. And then I continue down and I've got some that are related to purchase orders and sales orders. So when I look at a specific condition or event, okay, I'm actually going to go in and look at, oh, overdo it. Let's look at this one. Okay, so I have a one event that's an accounts receivable event looking for any overdue invoices that are greater than $2,500. Now, when I open up this event, I have five components that can make up this event. I have at the top what's called the schedule, that is how often do I want Knowledge Sync to look for this condition within my underlying database. Every minute, every five minutes, every day at a certain time, you've got complete control over the schedule. The second component is the query. Okay, we won't have time to get into this today, but I do encourage you to ask questions or follow up with us on this. But this is Knowledge Sync's way to interrogate your underlying database to look for not only the triggering mechanism, that is which condition or conditions do, am I looking for, but also to retrieve the unique information within your application so that it can be made available in an outgoing email notification alert, in a web dashboard, a report, et cetera. So this is the underlying query. So it's kind of the engine under the hood, if you will. The deliverables can be as numerous or as few as you'd like. I'm sending out email in this case. I'm sending out a page or a text, SMS. I'm sending out an instant messenger. I'm auto-generating a report in this particular case. And I'm even doing a little bit of a workflow in that I'm creating an external file that I might want to push to another application. Fourth component of an event are the subscribers. Who are my recipients? Who do I want to deliver this to and in what format? I personally prefer text messages and web dashboards and sometimes email. Um, you know, I've got our folks in finance here that really like to get things via fax. They're still very heavy on the fax and document side. So again, you can have a limited number of subscribers or recipients as part of your event. And those can be internal, external, they can be distribution lists, they can be groups or departments, it's entirely up to you. And then finally, I do have a workflow or an action being performed on this particular event. So we're down to our last few minutes, so I do want to just at least open up the event so you can see the different pieces of this. When I open up this event, we're going to tab over from left to right to see what the different parts are that make up the event. As I mentioned earlier, we have an underlying query. Okay, so this underlying query is looking at my database application for any invoices with an unpaid balance that's greater than X. Now, in this particular case, we are using what's called a parameter-driven query. That means I'm not going to assign a value here at the query level. I'm going to do it down here. That way, if I want to use this query to look for any open invoices uh, or invoices overdue with a balance of greater than $2,500, I might want another one that looks for anything that's less than uh, you know, $100 or whatever. I can reuse this query over and over again, and I can simply hard, count, hard code whatever value I want in my parameter down here. Now, in this particular event, we are, in fact, auto-generating a report. Because what I want to do in this particular event is I have a crystal report that shows all my open invoices for this customer. 
So in this particular case, I am going to be generating any open invoices that are, that are assigned to this customer, and they are going to be sent out to the customer when I send out the notification. And in this case, with this particular report, you've got a number of different reporting options. Um, you can do this in a crystal report. You can do this in a chart or a graph. Uh, PDF is still very much a preferred way, but you can also send it out through Microsoft Word, Excel, etc. I can also attach static files. Okay, so if I've got other static files that I want to send out as attachments to my email, whether they're payment procedures, whether they're installation instructions, any of those, I can attach those to my outgoing alert notification. And this is the email tab. So for every time Knowledge Sync identifies and finds a matching condition to match this event, okay, this email is going to go out. It's going to pull all the unique information from within your underlying database application. It's going to populate this with all these fields, and the customer will then receive their notification and any other subscribers or recipients that you assign. Now, one thing worth noting here in the message is this, a plain, this is a plain text email message. We do support HTML. In fact, we provide you with HTML templates that you can simply copy and paste into this message text editor here, and you can assign your own labels and things like that. We and I prefer HTML. To me, it's just more visually pleasing, and it's uh, bound to, to get my attention more so than a plain text message. But that is completely controlled by you. And the faxing, paging, web dashboards, all those are set up very similar to the email tab. You'll simply select those fields that you want it as, to make available in your outgoing email message. Knowledge Sync will pass all the data related to those fields through in the email or the report or the web dashboard, et cetera. And I mentioned subscribers. Now, in this particular case, I've got four different subscribers. I've got a department, my finance group. I've got myself, and I've got two executives. And you'll notice that with all the different delivery methods that you can choose, you can really bug the heck out of someone. And this, by the way, does not even include the Twitter function if you wanted to go so far as to use the Twitter function. So again, email, fax, copy, or FTP if you want to make this available on another computer for more uh, wider viewing, etc. And one of the great things is we provide you with a subscriber linking tool. So that if you've got subscriber data residing either in some other database, you can simply link Knowledge Sync to that database, pull all that subscriber data in. So the idea is we want to eliminate the need for you to have to manually put in subscriber information. And again, no limit to the number of subscribers. You'll see in this case we're using an advanced subscriber because in addition to these four subscribers, I also want to include the email address for the salesperson associated with this account. And since that salesperson's email address resides within my underlying database, I'm simply selecting that field and it's going to dynamically pick out the salesperson associated with this customer and they will now be added as a recipient or subscriber. And I think that kind of brings us to the bottom of the hour. So I, I really shotgun through that last part of it. So I do apologize for uh, going through this rather rapidly. There's a lot of content to cover in a fairly short amount of time. Um, what I will say is a couple of things. Um, if you're interested in looking at or evaluating the Knowledge Sync or the Sage Alerts and Workflow or the Sage Knowledge Sync application, um, then I certainly encourage you to do so. We offer a free 30-day trial. It's the full working software. All functionality is enabled. It gives you unlimited database licenses that you can monitor multiple applications with. And the good news is if you should do any work and decide to go into production with it, any work that you've done during the evaluation period can be retained. Um, and again, we work very closely with uh, E2B Technologies on this. They're a great partner with us. I encourage you that if you're interested in getting uh, a more in-depth demo with a wider audience within your organization, if you're interested in evaluating this, please let them know or certainly reach out to me and we can all coordinate it together. So with that in mind, I'm going to turn it back to Jeannie and see if anyone has any specific questions uh, or ideas or suggestions. Thanks, Craig. That was uh, very nicely done. And yeah, I don't have my contact information up there, but my email is jlee, L-E-E, -E, at e2btech.com. So if you guys don't, you know, just reach out to me or Craig. Either one will all get hooked up somehow. But I don't see any questions in the chat box. I don't know if anybody's dialed in. Try and load in. But um, 
Yeah, so we'll just give it just a minute here and we'll wait and just to let you everybody know that this was recorded and it will be made available on our YouTube channel. And I'm sending out a, um, an email that will have the link once it's up on YouTube as well. But I'm not seeing any questions here, Craig. Okay. Well, uh, if that's the case, any questions that come up afterwards, um, again, feel free to reach out to Jeannie. Um, she'll communicate with me if there are any questions or if there's things that you want to look at in more detail. But again, um, I want to thank you folks for showing up this afternoon and taking time out of your busy schedules. And certainly thanks to Jeannie and the rest of the folks at uh, E2B Technologies. We appreciate that. You're welcome. Thank you for spending some time with us. So, okay. Well, we'll talk to you guys all soon. Okay. Bye-bye.